Hey, Radhe Radhe. Today we are reading from Radharasa Sudanidi from Prabodhananda Saraswati Thakur, uh, verse 25. Sat Premarasi Saraso Viksat Sarojam Svananda Sidhu Rasa Sindhu Vivar Dhanendum Tak Tach Shri Mukam Kutila Kundala Bringa Justam Shri Radike Tavara Tavakada Nu Vilo Kai Sie Translation O Sri Radike When can I see your beautiful blooming Lotus face that grows in a lake full of true love for Krishna, that is full of honey that intoxicates Krishna, that is like a moon that causes the ocean of rasa to swell, and that is beautified by curly locks of hair that are bluish like bumblebees? <laughs> o Sri Radhike, when can I see your beautiful blooming lotus face that grows in a lake full of true love for Krishna that is full of honey that intoxicates Krishna that is like a moon that causes the ocean of rasa to swell and that is beautified by curly locks of hair that are bluish like bumblebees? The title here is A Lotus Flower in a Love Lake. Commentary Shripat is in his Svarupavesh from beginning to end. He does not have to endeavor to get these visions. They come spontaneously. Gurudev, why Shripat has not to endeavor to get these visions? Why they are coming spontaneously? Hey, Mahatma Ji, you can, can you hear us? Mahatma Ji, can you hear us? I think they cannot hear. As we were leaving, I think I remember him saying like something to the effect that he's busy or something, and mm, I don't cool. think they engaged the, the speaker there. I don't think they turned on the speaker. Maybe Gurudev cannot hear us, so we will continue. But maybe someone would like to address that question. Yeah, maybe someone can answer this, please.
So uh, I think only someone who is fixed in this majority bhav maybe can answer this question, <laughs> right? I mean, we can speculate, you know, as to why we can talk about Kuru Kripa. We can talk about so many things that are written. That how someone can have this stay above, right? Because this is what it's talking here about here. Mm -hmm. From beginning to end, from beginning to end, continuously. As to why he doesn't have to endeavor. We can understand that being in this state of mind, in this state of consciousness, in this surupavesh, doesn't require endeavor. It's not about endeavoring. It's about surrendering. And it's about realizing our true identity. And once we reach that stage, there's no question of endeavoring. The only endeavoring is as the maid servant, we are endeavoring to please Radharani, of course. But endeavoring to get into this majority bhav, this is not, not, uh, not relevant. <clears throat> so this is the nature of majority bhav, that it is spontaneous. It's not something we will to happen. It's not like a switch that we can turn on and turn off at will. No. This is the meaning of svarup. This is our nature. This is our identity. So we have a great example and Shripad Prabhupada Saraswati Thakur and also in Raghunath Das Goswami. These are the two great shining beacons of light that we follow. So we're very, very fortunate to have this wonderful book translated into English so that we can relish and we can try to follow this feeling, this highest feeling of in Madhuraras. So I think to try to speculate about how or why or when this is of course our nature, right? In this Tatashta Shakti, we are moving in between spiritual and material life. We are trying to use our minds so much to understand and to figure out how can I get it, what can I do, how do I endeavor? But here we have the answer is no endeavoring, just surrendering, that's all. Opening our heart to receive the mercy, the Guru Kripa, to surrender to, to Nityananda Prabhu, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, also they are opening this portal. So I don't want to say more, but I just really appreciate this opportunity to participate in these wonderful meetings and to immerse our minds, our hearts in, this, in these pastimes, in these beautiful visions. Because yes, he is having the vision, but if we are connected, we also can have some vision. Maybe it's not completely clear and completely vivid, but we still are getting some vision this way. It's very nice. So I'll let you continue reading. Thank you. Jai Sri Radhi, good morning. Good oh, morning. So nice. Siddhanta Ji, question is also very nice. 
We are here on the plains of Rupa Goswami's deities. Jai. Next door, and yesterday we had a beautiful darshan. It was, uh, wow, I cannot explain in words how beautiful this was. So close to our Rupa. I feel so blessed, I cannot tell you. Yeah. And it was really beautiful. This the, and so beautiful devotees here. They had a this this kirtan was wow. I think we have a, a small video. I will show you when we are back. It's very impressive. So Actually, you gave, I think you gave the, the right answer there with the sty bath. And it's not an act of endeavor. It's an act of mercy of our Swamini. And in the last days, Gurudev spoke about to be a baby. And when baby is calling for the mother, mother will, will surely come when it's crying and give up the all the what's that, uh, uh, spirits are, tools, toys, toys, toys. Mm. all other toys. <laughs> and it's really uh, fixed on the mother. Mother will surely come. And this is not our real endeavor so that we can meditate uh, in the case of, oh, when I do this uh, very intensely, it will, it will come. It's not on us. It's on Swamini. Yeah. She, will, she will come. It's her mercy. And she will give this vision. So we can see in, in the book, We Love Kushmanjali and Radha Asutadidi, how to get these visions by the example of those who wrote this book yeah. and by the explaining. Yes, but I think we have to do the endeavor to get into, into our Svarupavesh. But if we once are living within our eternal spiritual body, then no more endeavor has to be done because then we are living within the spiritual world and then there is no more end to the vision. Then I don't have to endeavor anymore, but I have to endeavor to get there <laughs> until I'm not getting there. We have to endeavor to do something. <laughs> to, pra to practicing like in the previous verse or in the verse before it was stated three times in the translation it was said that this flow of love and vision what the vision is a flow of love will come to the practicing devotee and in the purport it was mentioned two times more to the practicing devotees. So practice, practicing is very important. Without what is the meaning of practicing? Practicing means hearing and chanting and lila smaranam and be engaged in loving devotional service. Our bhajan is our practice. <laughs> <laughs> But you sit as Varup, you can chant as long as you like. You will never get without the mercy of the Guru. But the mercy. So this is the meaning of, uh, of mercy that you find someone who is connected to yeah. our Swamini. And without this, all praxis and all bhajan is not successful. You need the direct contact with one who is in online, I would say. Online. Yeah, yeah, of course. This is 100% true. Rupa, Rupa is, uh, is uh, get this from 
Mahaprabhu directly. Rupa gave it to his disciple, Raghunath. This is mercy. It's all by mercy and by direct contact. Yeah. It's not endeavor. It's uh, uh, yeah. It's a mer it's all an act of mercy. But to get that mercy, we have to make ourselves available to it. So that means the mercy is coming when we want that mercy to come. If we allow ourselves that the mercy can come by practicing. No, I'm finished. I'm finished. A fruit, a fruit cannot think about how ripe she is. <laughs> the fruit will get ripe by nature. <laughs> this is my feeling with this. Yeah, I I mean, there's definitely something in both angles. So, of what I'm hearing, and it's really beautiful to know, as Gurusinder is saying, that there is hope, right? Even for the most fallen, my God, I mean. I look at myself <laughs> 25, 30 years ago in progression, and even today I'm, of course, very fallen, but still, we look at ourselves, we say, how is it possible mm. that, that somehow we have come to this most pure, holy place, in the, not just in the planet, I mean, in the, all of the universes, right? Mm. <laughs> I mean, like, It's too amazing that our mind cannot really grasp the depth of how fortunate we are. This is only possible through mercy, causeless mercy. There is no amount of practicing, endeavoring for us to get this most precious gift. Now, on the other hand, What Pon Varabha is saying, also there is something there too. Mm. So we know that we are not chosen. We are not chosen special people or jivas that only we were eligible for this. No, no, no. Mahaprabhu came. He came to distribute this widely. We know this. He opened the floodgates of this of this beautiful thing. We have this verse. Now we're chanting it every day. Anarpita charim chirat. I'm not going to say the whole thing, but we know this verse, that may the Supreme Lord, who is known as the son of Shivati Sachi Devi, may the Supreme Lord transcendentally be situated in the innermost chambers of, your, of our heart. He appeared in this Kali Yuga by his causeless mercy to bestow what no one else ever offered. This Radiant, this resplendent with the radiant, the molten gold radiance, this, this, um, of this ras, this manjari bhav, right? So he came to distribute it widely. We know this. So why is it that some of us can accept? And we see so many that cannot accept. So here is where the the idea of the practice enters. As we plant a seed in the soil to grow, we know some seeds are going into the soil and they're not sprouting. They're just sitting in the soil for years and years and years. But at some point, it's possible for that seed to germinate and sprout into this creeper of bhakti. We know this is possible. We also know 
that if we prepare the soil, if we do some practice to cleanse our heart, to eradicate the anartas, then that's, that seed has a better chance of germinating, of sprouting. This is the power of the Maha Mantra, which is invested with all of the energies. We read the Shikshastikam three times a day. We meditate on it. We accept Shikshastikam as our guiding instruction. And we know the power of this Maha Mantra. That's why we're chanting it constantly. Because we know that this practice, this Kirtan, Shmaran, if also chanting Japa is also Kirtan, we can say. This is the best practice for us. And that by the same token, we can say it's not really so much endeavor, is it? I mean, how much endeavor is it to chant the Maha Mantra? No. It's a question of surrendering, opening our heart, Trinada Pisanichina, chanting without offense. You see, we have all the instruction is there. We just have to have a little bit of discipline. We have to have a little bit of desire. And then that gradually will increase, increase, increase. And the next thing you know, you're in the lap of Radharani. Here in Vrindavan. It's a beautiful, beautiful process. <coughs> and uh, I feel as long as we are thinking we are the doer, then it, uh, we have a problem. We are, Gurudev is always explaining that we have to become a viewer. And uh, this is his mercy. He fixed us in our eternal position and he, by his mercy, we get our Ishtadevi. And this is the starting point to enter into the Lila. If we fix ourselves in this Daibab, this is the only thing and but I'm even not this, I'm not the doer. This is the mercy of the guru again. This is my feeling. I only can speak about my realizations in this process. As long as I sing, I'm the doer. And uh, that will not happen. I really yeah. have to become the viewer. So, for my feeling is that here we don't want to be uh, the doer in the sense that we are the controller. But as uh, Srila Prabhupada has also said, that this is not an automatized process. So, things are not happening automatically. We have to surrender to the holy name, surrender to the lotus feet of Sri Guru, and then the mercy can come if we have the desire to. So some endeavor from our side has to be there without thinking of being the controller or controlling the situation like uh, we think that we are doing it. We are always dependent on the mercy of Guru and the Vaishnavas. So I continue with the purport. Yes, yeah, sure. He floats on waves of prayer into the, <laughs> into the kingdom of transcendental pastimes. In his Kinkari Svarup, Sripad has now finished massaging Srimati's limbs with oil. 
The maidservant knows what Srimati doesn't know. Nagarendra, the king of womanizers, is admiring her uncovered limbs from up in a tree. Swamini is absorbed in thoughts when her maidservant calls her. Swamini, get up and take your bath. Srimati is startled and says, Who is it? <clears throat> is it you anointing me with oil? I forgot it was you. Your touch is just like Krishna's. Blessed is this maidservant that she can touch Swamini exactly as Shyama does. She is an eternally perfect maidservant from whom the aspirants Aspirants. Aspirants. Aspirants should learn their services. So this maidservant is so expert that Swamini thought her Shyama Sundara is massaging her and she was kind like astonished. And she's asking, who is it? Is this you who talked to me? Then she realized that this maidservant was massaging her. So, and here this, my, this maidservant is teaching us how much expert that we can become as a maidservant in doing our seva to the full satisfaction of Swamini. So we have to be aspirants, means we have to be ready to learn. And also here, in our present situation, in our sadak body, sadak deha, material body, we can learn that by surrendering to Gurudev. Surrendering means that we are ready to do what Guru is telling us that means that we have very much to diminish our ego because the ego doesn't want to surrender the ego doesn't want to be humble so this is the practice of removing the unwanted things from from our heart by the process of chanting us uh, Siddhanta was mentioning before with the hearing and chanting we are removing the unwanted things from our heart Anartha Nivriti but more important is Artha Pavriti to install the things who are favorable for our Seva within our heart to install them like surrendering and taking shelter so that we can do the progress so is required to cultivate our Svarupa Vesh, our eternal spiritual body. And as Gurudev says, <coughs> Me within the process, nobody knows how long it will take. So we have to be patient and keep our bhajan going and not give up if the result is not coming very soon. Because we have not a business relationship. This is not a business relationship. It should be a loving relationship. That means that I give everything without expecting anything in return. And there the mercy is coming in. It's a mercy path. 
Bhakti path is a mercy path. It's all depending on the mercy of Guru and the Vaishnavas. And if Radharani sees that Gurudev is very much pleased with us, then the mercy will be flowing, the love stream will be flow, will come to us. Very nice, mm -hmm. very nicely said. Um, as I read this one sentence, it's a little bit perplexing. Yeah, maybe it was addressed yesterday. I wasn't here for the whole class because yesterday's verse dealt with this, this one point. The maid servant knows what Shrimati doesn't know. The maid servant knows what Shrimati doesn't know. Nagarendra. Mohan, the king of womanizers, is admiring her uncovered limbs from up in a tree. So in the previous verse, <clears throat> Sri Pad is saying, Oh Sri Radhike, when can I see your young lover, Mohan? sitting in a high kadamba tree, watching you. So, again, because I'm not, not really connected in this majority path, I don't understand. Maybe someone can explain. How is it? that the Manjari, Radhika, is only interested in pleasing Shimati Radharani. That is her exclusive service. She only cares about pleasing Radharani. So the question here is how does that dedication, that devotion to Shemata Radha's service, how does, how does this fit into that picture, into that desire, into that mood that she wants, she's facilitating this, that Krishna can be like a voyeur, right? He's a voyeur, he's, he's, he's watching her. And, and, and the Manjari, he wants this to happen. And he doesn't tell. So it's almost like he has some special, she has some special, the Manjari has some special feeling, desire to also please Krishna. But we're never talking about this. We're never hearing this. Maybe I'm, I don't know. I, like I said, I don't have this, this experience. So maybe someone can help me understand this. The so Gurudev is not there. Radhe Radhe Gurudev. I think his mic is off. But his his speaker is off. Oh. Yeah, unfortunately, he is busy with something at the moment. I think. <laughs> So what my feeling is to this is that uh, this is a part of the Leela that uh, because Krishna actually is the only one who can, who can see Swamini in that, let's say, in that condition, in a very intimate situation. Therefore, the Manjari is not bothering about it, and indirectly, she's doing a seva to Krishna, 
because her direct seva is to take care of Swamini by massaging her in such a nice way that she thinks it is Krishna who is doing that, not being aware that he is looking to her from up that tree. But the Manjari knows, but didn't tell her because it's part of the Leela. She allows that because anyway, only Krishna is allowed to see Radharani in this way. But we should ask this to Gurudev too. This is like my feeling to this. Should I have some comment on this? <clears throat> Actually, it's a, a point that is very, very important to get this. Manjari knows desire of Swamini, right? And desire of Swamini is to please Krishna. Mm -hmm. And to yeah. increase his desire towards her. And because the Manjari knows exactly this desire in Radhika, because of this she allowed this mm -hmm. voyeur, voyeur, voyeur. Yeah. <laughs> voyeur. <laughs> getting a voyeur. Yeah. <laughs> Becoming. Becoming a viewer, and uh, this increase the desires in Mohan mm. so so much. So this is uh, yeah. I mean, all these lilas, they are not married, right? Mm. Mm -hmm. From the from the worldly moral side, there are some problems. <laughs> but uh, from the Leela side, we can understand this is increasing feelings, mm -hmm. loving feelings towards the Yoga Lakishore. And mm -hmm. this is one of the, the most enjoying times of Mohan, mm -hmm. when he can see this beautiful scene on the bank of Yamuna, mm -hmm. when the Manjari is massaging his Swamini, and he can openly see this, that is, uh, yeah, this is increasing his feelings as a maximum. And the Mandari is expert to guide this in her seva. That mm. Mohan is really eager. And they, in that case, we understand that there is also a, a relationship between the Mandari and Mohan. Right. Because he agree. So we, we know that he is with folded hands. He is lying on this on this branch and please don't tell her please don't tell her <laughs> let me enjoy this for one more moment <laughs> and so this is really beautiful scene and this is the relationship between them but actually for sure you you're right manjari is really has this focus on swamini as and so because of this focus she understand that do, that will be pleased Swamini at topmost when Mohan is so pleased. So she, Manjari, pleased both <laughs> Mohan and Swamini. But Ooh. first, always through Swamini. Yeah, so this is the perfect answer. Thank you so much. And um, <clears throat> yeah, I mean, it's amazing, right? <clears throat> how intense <clears throat> how focused is is the manjari's desire to please Radharani that she's enabling Mohan to see this really like intimate scene but even Swamini doesn't know it 
So Amni doesn't know that Krishna is looking. Or maybe she does. Maybe she has some some <laughs> sense, right? <laughs> but but I mean, it's so intense that the Manjari doesn't even need to tell Swami. Doesn't want to tell Swami because she knows Krishna is getting more pleasure. If maybe Swami doesn't know, you know, this voyeur, that's the thing about the voyeur. It's like nobody knows I'm looking and I'm seeing, you know, it's like that's exciting, exciting more and more and more, you know. So oh it's it, it's just, you know, just that's such an amazing, amazing Leela. It's just, yeah, uh, it's just totally I mean, captured. Why captured. he knows this, how he knows this, it's a parrot telling him this, that that happened. So yeah. there is a, there is an uh, information flowing. Uh, in the, in the, the whole Vrindavan, uh, uh, this, this whole Dham is is uh, engaged in this mm -hmm. Lila. So yeah. this is not only Radha and Moha. No, 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 no. This is all is, is happened. So the mm. uh, all also the the season uh, uh, is is engaged in this Lila. Mm. So the tree is engaged in this Lila. Yamuna is engaged. yeah. Yeah. But there are all this this parrot so that that can happen and it's so beautiful to see it. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Amazing. Some days before we made a boating tour to Yamuna. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh there still now you can see these beautiful trees there. Mm -hmm. And it's so nice to meditate on this Leela. It's also so funny. The, the Manjari is watching this and what it will happen in the heart of the Manjari. How mm. much is she pleased by in this Leela? So her heart is overflowing. She can massage Swamini. She, so she please Swamini. Mm. So she can Please, Mohan, same time. How, how, I, uh, undescribable feelings will be in that Vanjari's heart mm. in that moment. My God, this is yeah. really, this is really Manjari. This is this, uh, uh, this Seva Ras, Seva Ras to 108% on the yeah. top mode. I mean, it's so <clears throat> intimate and it's so high. It makes me wonder how <laughs> how Prabhupada Sarasvati decides he wants to share this. <laughs> you know, <laughs> excuse me. Normally, you know, these really intimate things you don't want to share. It. You just like you lock it up and throw away the key. You keep that safe. You know. But he's like sharing it with us. I mean, what mercy, huh? It's incredible. Oh, my God. Well, we have some nice... Yeah, please, Kishori, please share. We miss you. Well, thank you very much. Very, very beautiful. And my heart is attracted to this. Sripada and Swamini go to a lonely bathing place. Mm. Lonely is the point. Mm. That's why Swamini can be relaxed totally. When only one Manjari can stay, Nagora Sunda Prabhu beautifully explained. This Manjari can serve Radha and Mohan both very intelligent way. <laughs> Without Manjari, it's impossible. Mohan cannot touch directly, then this mood will be broken. That's why manjaris are very important. And parot is also important. Just Gorasundar Prabhu says, all Vrindavan serves 
This Radha Mohan's makes more eagerness. How much makes their love high? This is Zevara's love. Maybe my word is cheap, just I repeated what you said, but somehow my heart is not. <laughs> No, no, no. Comes out like this. Jody, this is the magic of the scene. It's really magic. The mm -hmm. whole dam is there, and it work. They all work together. Everything is there, uh, full of awareness, and it's uh, the whole dam is one pointed. And on that point, it's the topmost. Uh, available uh, situation in that kind of a lila. And so we can uh, really uh, enter in this magical moment when that happened. So Mohan is on the tree. How much bliss will this tree has? When he is lying on his on that branches, Swamini is illuminating the whole scene with her uh, bodily uh, what is it glance? Luster, effulgence, effulgence. Yes, with her bodily effulgence. The Yamuna is there with blackish color. There is parrots, there are birds singing to the scene. Manjari is massaging Swamini. All this happening is a, is a magical moment in the Leela and it's, it's so beautifully described in this book that it's really uh, enchanting all our feelings towards our Swamini. Yeah. Her beautiful golden body illuminates the passing place near the Yamuna. And this blackish color of Yamuna water reminds Swamini of Shamasundara. You see? <laughs> and Manjari is see it. My God. My God. This is magic. Actually, we should have a very, very deep appreciation for this. As Siddhanta said, normally no one will share this most intimate personal experiences. But these two books are from two fully self-realized souls in Bhajan. Actually, they are like Ratimanjari. Raghunath Das Goswami and Prabhudananda Saraswati is also an eternal manjari in the spiritual world who by their mercy came here to teach us how to perform bhajan and, and where we can get by doing so and get the feeling of what it is like to be a manjari and doing all these personal services and relishing this, I get the feeling for it. <laughs> and as Gorasundara said, in this material world, a para amur situation, it is called parakia. Parakia. But I mean, uh, if you are married and you have an ex, yes. it's para amor. Para amor. Para amor. Para amor. Situation in this material world from the uh, 
moral point of view, it causes, it's problematic, so to say. But this is completely transcendental. A loving affair in the spiritual world who has nothing to do with such loving affairs in the material world. That means also that this cannot be imitated by us or is not possible to do this with a material body. So we need a spiritual body to enter into the Kunja and into the Leela. And Tripat is showing us how to do so. Thank you. Beautiful. Thank you. I'll, I'll sing this next verse of Srila Narottama Das Thakur Mahajan Mahasaya has this beautiful Bhajan Priya Sahachari Sange Seva Kori Borange Ange Visha Kori Bek Sade Rako Seva Kaji Nija Pada Pankaji Priya Sahachari Gana Maji Pardon my voice, I'm just trying to get my vocal cords back in shape, but it's a very slow process. <laughs> <laughs> I will joyfully serve. I will joyfully serve Radha and Mohan along with their dearest maidservants. By dressing their limbs, please keep me at your lotus feet for such services amidst your dearest maid servants. So we ask, we can ask, you know, why, <clears throat> why is. Uh, Anantago Padas, or whoever's writing this, Anantago Padas writing the commentary, or Anandadas Babaji? Anandadas Babaji. So why is he including these prayers from Nirottama Das Thakur? These are, these are very important. The, the, the surrender of Nirottama Das Thakur is something that we have to follow in his footsteps to develop these these deep feelings. This is the only way. From this very, very humble position, he's saying, please keep me at your lotus feet for such services amidst your dearest maidservant. So he only wants to be a servant of the maidservant, you see. And this is what we're all aspiring for, right? We want to first, we have to be a servant of the maidservant. Then the maidservant will invite us <clears throat> and introduce us as this new maidservant. So this is really important that we find these, this Pratana song bhajan in this book, in this verse. He's reminding us, first you become a servant of the maidservant. Only then. Do you have this access, this pathway, right? <clears throat> to this one, Charlie Buff. Sukhandi Chandana Mani Maya Abharana Koshika Vasana Lalara Gini Isab Seva Jara 
I will always stay with these maid servants as their maid servant, serving you in different ways with fragrant sandal paste, jeweled ornaments, and silken garments without even a tiny drop of mercy from these eternally liberated maidservants, it is impossible to experience and perform such services. Lord Krishna explained to Lord Brahma prior to the four root verses of the Bhagavata. What is the importance of grace from above? <coughs> Yavan, Aham, yeah, you please. <coughs> so here we can beautifully see that we are not doing our sevas alone. We are not alone. There are thousands and millions of maidservants. So we are supposed to be the maid servant of the maid servants to get their mercy that they will show us how to do the sevas how to become very expert and our the main manjari that we have in the spiritual world is our guru manjari so as we discussed uh, before also there is no question of being independent like here we are supposed to help each other we are doing this sharing as a seva to the other devotees to the other vaishnavas that we can inspire each other to go deeper in our bhajan and the same it is happening in the spiritual world we are neither alone there as we are not alone here so sadhu sangha is very important to come together and do it together and in the spiritual world we are all together with all the manjaris and now our guru manjari she is giving us the seva that we have to perform and she is sending us to the other manjaris who are performing that seva so that we can become very expert in what we are doing by serving them. Shri Rade. Thank you for picking this point. And one thing come to my heart. Every day we are singing Shri Rupa Manjari Pada in Arati. At least three times a day. Shirupa Manjari Pada, Seymora Sampada. To follow our Manjaris, Rupa Manjari, Rati Manjaris, Guru Manjaris means our Parampara. This is the only way. When we sing, why we sing every day, many times, this Shirupa Manjari Pada. This is the only way. Maybe I feel this is a hope. I yeah, hope I, it. Shirupada, say more sampada. Shirirade. Thank you, Kishori. That's the point. This Sri Rupa Manjari Pada. This is our prayer. We are praying for seva because we are dependent on the mercy we cannot do it by ourselves this is the ego who is telling us you are so great you know so many things you are so good everyone likes you you can do it 
This is the false ego. But the real ego means to be humble. The false ego doesn't like to be humble. And this bhakti path is only for non-envious people. To be envious means that we cannot accept the greatness of someone else. So this we can learn with Gurudev, that he is a self-realized soul who can give us the feeling, but to get that feeling first we have to surrender and to pray for it. Like in the spiritual world, it is similar. We are going within the Kunja, where our Guru Manjari is, then we are washing her feet and washing her hands, and then she is giving us the Seva. She is showing us what is required at the moment as our Seva. And then we go to the other Manjaris who are there, and they show us how to become expert in our particular seva. It's all a loving harmony, loving exchange. And this is why we are here to learn how to become a loving. Ultimately, it's all about love, but how to love? So we have to approach someone who has this love, because we cannot give something that we don't have. So first we have to have to receive this love from someone who has it. Hear the words who Lord Krishna explained to Lord Brahma. Yatan aham yuta bhavo yat rupa guna karma kaha tataicha tatva vigyanam astute mat anugrahat. O oh, Brahma, may you realize the full actual truth about my forms, qualities, and activities by my grace. So even Brahma is realizing this by the grace of Krishna. Grace means it's another word for mercy. Without mercy, it cannot be understood. Therefore, there is a compassionate blessing here. The secrets of Raga Bhajan can only be known through grace. So, this is how we should approach the Vaishnavas and the Guru. So, that they will bestow their grace upon us and have mercy. Because, like Gurudev wants us to be close to him. Closeness means that we open up our heart to him, then he will open his heart to us. Actually, his heart is always open, but if we, our heart is closed means because of our blockages, we cannot go deep in our association. So on that we should work 
really on that. Like Radharani, she wants us to be close to her as her maidservants. She wants us. She likes us to have near to her. But here I can feel that first we have to allow that opening of our heart here within our present situation in our Sadak Deha that we can transfer this to our Siddha Deha, to our spiritual body, how to love. The secrets of Raga Bhajan can only be known through grace. Krishna Tat Bhakta Karunya Matra Labhaika Hetuka. This is a verse from Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu. The only cause of Raganuga Bhakti is the mercy of Krishna or his devotees. The Acharyas are most merciful, for they left their experiences behind in their books. Mm. This is the mercy of the Acharyas, that they left their experiences within the book. What we are reading here are they their experiences in the bhajan so deep to let us to give us the opportunity to meditate upon these experiences and relishing the feeling <laughs> that so that the picture of this can become clear and we can feel in due course of time what this all is about and where our place is within this. You want to say something? The Acharyas are most merciful for they left their experiences behind in their books. Sripat Sarasvati's heart's prayers are kept in this Radha Rasa Sudanidi, the nectar ocean of Radha's Rasa. An aspirant is blessed if he can taste even one drop of this nectar ocean. The maidservant has completed Srimati's bath and starts to dress and ornament her. But Swamini has noticed an unnatural look in her eyes and quickly covers her limbs. Startled, she looks all around, thinking, Is beautiful Shyama maybe behind me somewhere? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Shyama is enchanted by the sweet gesture gestures Srimati makes at that moment, and the maidservant feels blessed. You wow. see, you see this, the maid servant want to decorate her. And Swamini is not interested in decoration. What you will decorate to the beautiful, who is already beautiful? <laughs> 
Yeah. But you so she is not interested. What she is interest? One pointed to his lover. Maybe he is looking to be in decor to my limbs or what? Yeah. So this is the beauty. That is Sonam Bonam. That she is only interested in Krishna. Jai Ho. And, and the Manjaris are only interested to decorate her. Yeah. So she not want to decorate herself. Then Manjari say, this ornaments, I am putting you that Krishna like this. Mm. Like a, uh, I don't remember that words. Huh? So I say, any decorate, any ornament she put. Ornament means Krishna. She, the Manjari want to ornament her with Krishna. Mm -hmm. Then she say, okay, okay, do it, do it, do it, decorate me. With Krishna, this is the ornament of Manjari, uh, to Manjari's service. And that she is happy to decorate herself with Krishna. Memory. That is the that is the meditation. We mind has to be fixed one point. Is, my mind is diverted in many material things. Yeah. It's crazy mind. Ego mind. Ego is control mind, then it diverts in different direction. They not merit my want to meditate in Krishna. But Rasamani meditate in Krishna. Gopi meditate in Krishna. Radhika uh, is meditating in Krishna. Sakis are meditating in Krishna. But Manjaris are only meditating in Radhika. So that is the Manjari. That is the Sonam Bonam. They no meditate for the controller. They are meditating the source of love. Yeah. Prabhupada say very clearly, you have to be PhD to understand Prabhupada's words. I say I'm following Prabhupada, bogus, no following. Because you break the parampara, you are running for the controller, not for the absolute truth. Radhika can meditate for Krishna, and I say I will meditate for Krishna, impossible. Gopi say I meditate for, I don't want to be Gopi. I cannot be a gopi because 15,000 years, who will do the tapa? Yeah. <laughs> I have a few less moments. 100 years of life, 50 years I sleep, then only 50 years left. And how many years I pass? And how much I have a time for living? When we buy the ticket, we buy return ticket, right? The date is fixed to return. The flight is fixed. You see the Mataji? Her flight is fixed to go. She gone. Mm. My flight is also fixed to go. I will go. Who come to live here? But in between I come, what I am doing, that is going to be with me. If I want to take again and again, but I will create the karma. And if I want to be always in the service of my Swami, I will stay with her. Jai. That's the point. And where the my Swami is there, Krishna is there, Manjari is out there. 
My Guru Manjari is also there. Rup Manjari Pad. Pad means the steps of Rup Manjari. Say more than Sampada. That is my wealth. Say more Brata. That is my promise. I don't want to deviate in confusing way. Mm. Tapa. That is my Tapa means austerity. What you do outside is no meaningful. Hmm. Austerity is no meaningful if it is not a goal of life. Understand? Yeah. yeah. So, Gurudev, the bhajan that we are performing is all happening on the inside. Bhajan means bhajidatu. Bhaj means you have to do that. What we are bhajan do, doing, name. Why name? I want to be near to you. Mm. Hare Krishna. Who is Hare? Radha is Hare. Hmm. Hare means stealing. Hare means to steal Radha. Radha is embracing to the Krishna. Hmm. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Then Krishna also said, Oh, who is doing this? <laughs> Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare also hmm. emerges from inside. That is Chaitanya. That is Chaitanya. Who covers to the Krishna in Radha Bhav, that is Chaitanya. Chaitanya means English consciousness. If you are not conscious, you cannot see Chaitanya. Hare Ram. Ramaiti Ram. Rama Ram. When they are together, that becomes Rama. <laughs> Hare Ram, Hare Ram. That Manjari says, Ram, Ram, Hare Hare. This is last line is a Manjari is standing and praying for the Ra divine couple. Hmm. Radha's Krishna, not my Krishna, is Gopi yeah. Baba. Yeah. Radha's Krishna, is not Krishna. That is Hare Hare. This is Guru Tattva. This is Nitai. Who is a Guru? Nityananda. Hmm. Nityananda is a Guru Tattva who teach you to the Isthadev and he navigates how to move to the Isthadev. That is Nitai. Hmm. They are Nitai. They are Guru who not teach this. I don't know that. Mm -hmm. Prabhupada said, Bono fight is spiritual master. Bono fight is spiritual master is Prabhupada. Yeah. Look, he said, they are no, uh, controller and uh, Absolute truth is not in one level. Yeah. Maybe controller is higher, uh, absolute truth is higher. That to research. You know research what is the spiritual life. Why the Prabhupada writes Sonam Bonam? Da. What is meaning of Sonam Bonam? I asking because you are Italian. This is Latino. Latino, yeah. It means the highest of the highest, the final conclusion. Sum bonum. 
So Krishna is not Sodam Bonam. <laughs> what Prabhupada's right? Yeah. What is Sodam Bonam? The source of love is Sonam Bonam. Yeah. That is the Sonam Bonam. Where you can see the love, divine love, and the source of divine love, that is Sonam Bonam. Yeah. Source of divine love. Hmm. And one thing. The controller is not impersonal. If you control something, it is not impersonal. Mm. You, have, you know the person where yeah. you control, right or not? And yes. controller knows and the servant knows the boss, right or not? Mm. Yes. They are not impersonal. Controller is not impersonal, but who is working, they are impersonal, so they cannot relate with that. Like a Mahishthir Dev Radha Mohan is not impersonal, but I want to keep impersonal relation with you. I cannot be close to you. So, Gurudev, to be close, we have to become personal. That is the point. How you are close with Nityananda? Because you are personal. Yesterday, so many boys and girls come. Why not you become personal to them? Because you are personal, but they don't want to be personal like in Itai to you. Nityananda not, like your daughter not. They are not personal with you. So you keep distance waiting for that. When Nityananda will come to me, my son, then I will be personal with you. I will say my thing. I will share my son. Try to understand. The day I understand, my, I got the must. If not understand, means I listen for useless. No result of that. It's after eight o'clock, Gurudev. Oh, sorry. Or rather. Thank you so much, Gurudev. We really, really, really love to hear you give the clarity and the focus to everything we're trying to do here. Thank you so much. It's really, really special. It will faster, my dear. If we do go in right path, it is so fast. Mm. His example is Mahatma. I know him how many years? Three years. Three years. And he is in PSD. Wow. In three years, he is in PSD. He is doing his service for his daughter and for his wife, but at the same time very detached and very attached. Like Gopi has a whole family, but they escape hidingly when they listen to the flute of Krishna. Why? They cannot live without seeing him. 
that is the, the, the gopis are the highest why why they have a family so they are lowest they have children they have a husband they have a mother-in-law father-in-law everything but they escape out for krishna fruit when they goes in the ears then they forget all the families that's the love without love we not understand source of love store number prabhu bhakti we are not running for controller please understand this prabhu bhakti what i say they are different level is not absolute truth is krishna they are two things one is the source of love if this only line understand all is a crystal clear mm. Thank you.